as uh, very uh, you know precisely narrated by professor thakur that our task is to understand the dynamics of fourth industrial revolution and when i say fourth industrial revolution it incorporates this idea of quantum computing and now we have moved beyond uh, genetic coding and all and now this is the era of quantum computing so in this uh, light of fourth industrial revolution uh, we are trying to understand the cognitive challenges that the humanity will face and one of the most pressing challenge is the idea of cognitive freedom so do we have this cognitive freedom for instance if i start with a very important text that is recently written by a very prominent biologist named robert seplowski the text is determinism and uh, the life without free will so there is sort of a some kind of a consensus that got built up in especially in biology that we do not have free will and if we do not have free of course free will is a very loaded term that is also it needs to be very taken care of that free will is a loaded term but if we do not have free will what are the implications it has on human condition what are the implications it has on social now the point is that with the advancement in quantum mechanics with the advancement in the metaphysics and philosophy of quantum mechanics we are somehow at the crossroad so there is jury is still out do we have that free will or not but what insights are now we getting it especially you know with the quantum turn is that there is a possibility that there is a possibility that some kind of uh, some kind of mechanism is there uh, which somehow uh, can have some idea of agency and free will uh, not just to humans but to other agents also so if and that mechanism uh, is based on this idea of Roger Penrose so Roger Penrose and Stuart Hameroff it's called orchestrated objective reduction theory and there are contemporary uh, global uh, you know quantum physics scholars who are now sort of accepting this premise recently they have got some evidence that this theory can make some sense that our brain could be not like classical computer but it could be like a quantum computer which means that it follows the lot of laws of quantum mechanics which are based on non determinacy non locality and uncertainty and contextuality and if this carries some weight what are the implications what are the cognitive challenges on the question of cognitive freedom and free will and uh, for instance uh, i mean uh, you know the very prominent scientist in google uh, works in google hamet uh, newen and uh, christoph koch they are now accepting this idea that you know probably we are quantum computers our brain is a quantum uh, you know mechanical system and the laws that it follows is qubits which is non algorithmic and again it is based on this idea of non computationality that computationality computability is not something that produces consciousness rather it is some some sort of quantum uh, you know quantum bizarre and weirdness in that sense so in that context we are trying to understand what are the challenges on the question of freedom on the question of free will and also you know what could be the insights i mean what insights these mechanisms and these philosophies can provide us to understand some of the eccentric some of the idiosyncratic phenomena for instance when we talk about uh you know this debate between free will do we have free will or not we tend to you know can associate these questions with other uh, you know um, some kind of uh, eccentric phenomena like telepathy like placebo effect like extra sensory perception for instance placebo effect all of you know what placebo is that this impact that mind has on the materiality uh, homeopathy some people they base they argue that is based on placebo so is there a reality which takes consciousness seriously uh, in the light of uh the challenges that biological determinism has uh, you know has placed it before us and now the question is that what insights do indian philosophical tradition and indian intellectual tradition can provide us in understanding the complexities of uh, these challenges and also in providing us with some kind of technique and modeling uh, probably technique and modeling of self reflexivity this idea that you know Uh, there is something there there is a tremendous capacity within us that we can be conscious of our own consciousness if that is true then in i mean in that context what insights do indian tradition provide us and to elaborate on that i would request my uh, colleague uh, rakesh to sort of elaborate on the indian intellectual part thank you